This video is twofold. See what I did there? First, we're reviewing an older piece. Second, we're doing it because the carne asada virus is running rampant. That's right, it's deadly. It has jumped over into statues. Look what it's done to this guy. <laughs> Welcome to the Extreme Channel. My name is Mr. X. Today we're taking an in-depth look review at this one-third scale statue, meaning he's three times smaller than what he'd be in real life. Two-Face from Batman Arkham Knight, manufactured by Prime One Studios. Really quick, two disclaimers. Number one, we talked in the, video, the beginning of the video about the Kukabala virus. We dare not speak its real name. We don't think a beer company should have to suffer because someone named a virus after the beer company. And we really wanted to scare you about how deadly this horrible virus is because the media is not doing a good enough job. Granted, there are about 500 other things out there that are more deadly, but if they talked about them, then it wouldn't be as scary, the stock market would do better, and they wouldn't have as many ratings. That's just my opinion based off of facts, but enough talking about the Kuchamala virus. Let's talk about this guy because he is underrated and he is amazing. So we're gonna dive right in. Prime One Studios made 1,050 of these. 700 of them were the collector's or normal edition, and then 350, which is what this is, the exclusive has an additional switch out. They retail for $899, and they're completely sold out from my knowledge, but you can usually purchase him secondhand for a little bit cheaper. Now, the reason I have him is he goes with my massive DC line. You can check out uh, close-up videos of that in this video right here of my room tour. And I wanted to review him today because the Coochie virus is really affecting some of my new arrivals. So we're looking at some of the old stuff that I have I've never reviewed, and it also gives me kind of a uh, renewed love for these pieces. I also plan on doing the Scarecrow piece that also came out. Here's a picture of that right here. So we're gonna review him probably a few days or a few weeks after this particular video drops. While Two-Face is obviously a Batman villain, he was Harvey Dent, the district attorney, this is based off of Arkham Knight which is a video game I've never played. Prime One Studios, the manufacturer of this, did an entire line of these pieces. And uh, if you don't know too much about Two-Face, he's essentially a, uh, uh, suffers from MPD, multiple personality disorder, but they're both present kind of at the same time, the left and right. And if you're really unfamiliar with Two-Face, I don't know why you're watching this, but thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I have something to tell you. If you wanna win some free statues, whether you know Two-Face or not, we are hopefully giving away these two Venom statues. We're giving away at least one of them, if not both of them, depending on when we can hit the deadline. Once we hit 10,000 subs, we're gonna give them away. Stay tuned towards the end of the video, and I will tell you how to win those. But for now, what can help is if you give this video a thumbs up. So uh, let's dive right into the review with this guy, starting with concept. And when we talk about concept, we say, does it make sense? Does it follow its origins? Um, is it cool? And I think this guy hits all of those on the head. So all of them have a very similar base with this Arkham Knight line. And what I really like is they're all varied to fit this character and this is no exception. So just like Harvey Dent, half of him is kind of a human and the other half is a burned up, flamed up victim. The base follows that same storyline where half of it is destroyed, half of it is I don't want to say perfect, but not destroyed. And as you move up, not only is he wearing uh, different clothes on each side, but it is the complete yin yang polar opposite, where there was black, there was white, and so on and so forth. And one thing I really like about this statue is his clean part or non destroyed part isn't clean. It's still very dirty, so it's realistic. It's, you know, the fact he's in a fight, there's guns, there's grenade launchers. As you can see, is that massive grenade launcher on his uh, right hand, which is a switch out we're gonna talk about in design. And I like how his clothes are charred and dirty, and it flows really well. As you move up, he has the classic Harvey Dent two face coin in his left hand that he flips all the time. And he has a couple head switch outs. The one I have displayed, he's very angry, very pissed and it really encompasses the concept of Two-Face very well. Now, while I've never played the game, I think this concept is great. It's a museum pose, meaning he's kind of standing for a picture, which is traditionally what Prime One Studios has always done with their one-third scale characters, although they've been branching out a little bit more recently and doing more of a dynamic pose, but this entire line is museum, so they all go together really well, which is smart with the concept. So I give the concept a WA four out of five, 
I don't give it an X because it's nothing amazing, but it is pretty cool. It encompasses everything you'd want for Two-Face, and it follows a cool a line if you want to display them all together. Next category is design. We talk about displayability, scale, do things make sense? And let's start with the um, size of him. Again, check out that room tour uh, to get an exact size with the other pieces. He's scaled very well, 15 inches wide. Now he's a smaller character because you think about characters like Mr. Freeze or Killer Croc are just naturally bigger anyway. And I think the deepest point probably from here to here is 11 inches. Height on the whole piece is just over 31. Harvey himself is about 24 inches. So that insinuates he's about six feet tall. Now one thing if you've noticed recently, I'm actually getting rid of quite a few of my one third scale DC pieces, but not the villains. So here's a sale video of the ones that I put up for sale. I am keeping most of the villains, however, because I have so many other villains coming in. So with design, I put him together a long time ago, but he's pretty simplistic. The base is one piece. Harvey minus his arms and his head are, are another piece. And there is a number of switch outs with this guy. Now, I don't have all the switch outs out. I left quite a few in the box. Sometimes when I open something up, I know I will never use those switch outs, and that was the case here. But I'll show you some stock photos. First, his portrait. Here's the screening portrait. This is the one I have displayed, so we will see close-ups of paint and sculpt in this. And then here is a stock photo of the other portrait. A little more serene, not as pissed. Here's a picture of his grenade launcher. This is the exclusive, so only 350 of them had this. Or you can swap it out for a gun. Then I also believe he came with a coin that I left in there, so an actual uh, coin for you that you could, you know, a Harvey Dent coin. Uh, but I left that in the box, I believe. So one of the things I really like about this piece is the displayability. For a one-third scale, it doesn't take up a lot of room. Uh, they were able to consolidate the base. He's not hanging over too much. I think that was smart engineering. I have no gaps or issues like that. His back heels up a little bit, but I think it's supposed to be. So really, I can't find anything with the design I actually would have improved. If it was more complex, engineering and it was perfect. I think it would be a knock out of the park, but I think it's a W as well. It's a four out of five on the extreme scale. It's a rail when it comes to the design of this piece. Now we're gonna jump into paint and sculpt. And one of the things that's really interesting you're gonna find out is it's really good. And I don't understand why this sells for under retail. Traditionally, most DC pieces do. Um, and one third scale, there's a, a smaller pool of collectors. But let's just look at how awesome this is. The base is good. It's not amazing, it's great, but I really love these church type cathedral uh, steeples that they're doing. They all go together. You can see the brick, a few different colors of shading on it. There is a sub base on the bottom, a tiny black one on all these. But what I really like about this one is the contrast where on, where on one side you have the portrait, the statue portrait. It's got some golds and some copper tones in there. And then the other side, not only is it demolished, but it looks like it was a skull. So that's really cool how they kept you know, matching yin for yang. On one side they have a pipe that looks kind of old and rusty, but the other side it's bashed in. And same thing with the base itself. Like there was an explosion and rocks and rubble on one side where the other side is uh, not destroyed. It's not perfect, so you can see the age and everything on it. On all of these, they have the bat symbol on the back, which of course you don't see from the back, but it's neat that they have that Easter egg. Take a look at the top here. The top looks good. A little more texture on these I think would have helped. But let's look at Two-Face, and he is amazing. I love his shoes. Again, they contrast each other. One is uh, white on black, one is black on white. Part of it's shiny, part of it has a little bit of uh, uh, texture, and you can see all the wear in there, like he's been in the battle. They added a lot of shadowing. Then as you move up his pants, it's awesome. There's two things going on, one with the white pants. I love the folds, I love the creases, I like the pattern in it. There's that shadowing that I said, looks like an explosion, a lot of debris and dust has flown into there. Then if you look at the black pants, what's going on there is they're all charred up, and as you get higher, you actually see his skin underneath, his burnt skin underneath it, and you're gonna see that a lot more when we get up to his suit jacket. Let's look at the back of his suit jacket here first. A lot of what we were just talking about of the pants is going on times more. Tons of folds, tons of creases. The jacket itself is charred. It actually looks like it's going to fall apart if you touch it. The, sh the paint and sculpt is done so well. And I like the blood, uh, charred skin underneath. 
it has this gloss effect on it and the deep different reds and purples look like burnt flesh same thing on his front you see some cool pockets and buttons on there as well and as you move up just charred sticking to his skin really really cool his vest and tie look okay i think there's a little bit of miss on that it's too shiny doesn't look real his undershirt i think it's the only one of the only two negative parts of the sculpt and paint and the other negative part i would say is his right hand it's way too pale i think uh it's not as detailed there's too many veins for someone who's not muscular so i think there was definitely some opportunity they missed there and his fingers seem really long grenade launcher looks good nothing fancy nothing out of the ordinary solid black color you see the inner workings of it check out his scarred arm this is awesome this is so cool I've never seen one of these in real life, but this is what I'd look like. I love the use of colors they use, the layering on the sculpt. His watch is awesome. See how his shirt is torn up by it too. His portrait is also really done well. So first I want to show you a side shot here where you don't see any of the scarred. So kind of the human part of it, I would say. Good sculpt in the hair. Some good detail on the face. He doesn't have a perfect face, so they even put some of that into the complexion. Great expression. And now let's flip to the other side where you only see the scarred part of it. Just like his arm, some awesome detail in here where the skin is deteriorating away. Let's look at a shot of the front of both. They did an awesome job with his eyes here. I love the gloss on them. I love the sculpt of the eyebrows, or eyebrow, one eyebrow. And then his mouth is the best part of the statue. Look at this, the glistening effect where it's torn away, the teeth, the tongue, everything is amazing in here. Really well done. So the paint and sculpt on this guy is a W. It's a four out of five. Both of them get that score, I think. A few little minor opportunities, but nothing out of this world. Such an underrated piece. And what's really crazy is how underrated he is considering there aren't a lot of two-face options in one-third or one-fourth scale. So very surprising that you can get him under retail, but that brings us into our next category. I think the value on this guy, I've, I, I paid under retail for him, and I've seen him go as low as like 700 shipped where he retailed at $8.99. So I think that the value on this guy is an X. It's a, it's a five out of five. It's a quintessential Batman villain. Paint is awesome, sculpt is awesome, concept is awesome, and you can get him for a hell of a smoking deal a lot of the times, especially if you're patient, patient, patient. If you're patient, if you're patient. So overall, I think this statue, it, we gotta rate it pretty high. I think he's surprisingly a four out of five. And realistically, for a Prime One Studios piece, a, an, an edition size of 1,000 isn't a ton. But it just goes to show that people want 60 different Batmans and only they don't even want one Harvey Dent. So, kind of interesting. So those are my thoughts on him. Uh, let me know what your thoughts on him are below. Let me know what you think of the uh, Koala virus. I know it's killing people, which is a, a travesty. Um, but so are donuts. And I don't see everyone mounting an attack on donuts. I wish they kind of would. Save me some time. Now, as promised, if you want to learn how to win that statue, first, write in your comments below what your favorite Batman villain character is. Not statue, but character. Is it Joker? Obviously, he's kind of the go-to. Or is it a kind of a one-off one? Second, make sure you've liked this video. And if you have not, make sure you have subscribed and hit that bell notification. And then just be on the watch out for that 10K video. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. Uh, we are going to insert uh, some video and close-up music of him. But until tomorrow, take care.